Here we are, Pandemic Cooking 101, Class 2. Oh, first things first, I'll be right back. Settle in. You know it's National Whiskey Day or World Whiskey Day. It's like World Whiskey Day. So clearly, any cooking has to be done with, yep, you named it, whiskey. I haven't pulled out my empty bottles because they make me feel happy and like I once had options instead of being down to the last bottle. Okay, pandemic cooking. At this point in the pandemic, you're probably running out of a few key ingredients. That's okay. We have baked oatmeal to the res rescue. So baked oatmeal um, is like one of those meals that you can just toss in anything really. Almost everything but the oats can be substituted with something else. And if you run low on oats, toss in some nuts. It's excellent. So, um, oh, and I'm Teal Sky Heller. Obviously you're on my page, so you're watching. So I have this very, very old recipe from way, way back. It is well worn and um, you could not claw this out of my cold dead hands. I love it. So let's get started. You got wet ingredients, you got dry ingredients. Don't even separate them. Like, just don't go there. We don't have time or, okay, let's be honest, we have tons of time. We just don't have the energy to do too many dishes. So we're doing it all in one bowl. So you start with the wet ingredients. Eggs, two eggs. Crack them into that bowl. Now, if you don't have eggs, that's okay. You don't need eggs. What do we got here for substitutions? Yep that old rotten banana you found in the freezer. Use it. What is it, half cup bananas to one egg. Now, your baked oatmeal, just so you know, gonna be a little more moist, more like paste. All right, so you got your eggs. Wash your hands after. If you don't have an egg phobia, just don't even worry about that, but I do, so there we go. Okay, so your eggs, you can sub in a flax meal egg, uh, applesauce. Here we go, what do I got? I have apple butter. If my kid wasn't allergic to apples, I would be using it. But instead, we're using the eggs. Okay, next. What is next? Oh, uh, sugar. Because believe it or not, your, um, your eggs and sugar, like it goes well together. So. We got a cup of sugar. Now here's the deal with sugar. In this recipe, I would always use brown sugar, but hello, we're in a pandemic. Brown sugar comes in those little tiny bags and I'm all out, that and the butter. So we have to resort to white sugar. Here's the other thing. It doesn't really matter how much sugar you use. I mean, you know, you kind of want to keep your wet and dry ratios right, but it doesn't matter. You like things sweet, add the full cup. You don't like it sweet, don't. Today, my kids have asked for rhubarb baked oatmeal, so we're putting in all the sugar. Okay, so you can also substitute, here's all the substitutions. You can substitute honey if you have that. You can substitute uh, maple syrup if you have that. All sorts of things. So, you take these eggs. Now, it says beaten eggs, whatever. Just whisk that up with the sugar and you'll be just fine. What else are we missing? Um, so you got your eggs, you got your um, eggs and sugar. So next you're gonna put in some oil. Now I pre-measured because don't I look like Rachel Ray? I know. So you're gonna put in some oil. Does it matter what kind of oil you use? Hell no. Here we go, we got um, some pure vegetable oil. That's as generic as you can get. Now if you wanna use your leftover olive oil, you just go for that and maybe then you make some like Bacon, maple, baked oatmeal, something, because you will taste that olive oil. Thing with oats, total blank slate, man. Anything, anything you add is gonna be the flavor. Now, do you hear that clicking? That's my neurotic dog. He's upset because I haven't fed him yet. I haven't even fed my own children yet. I don't know why the dog thinks he's gonna get fed, but here we go. He, you're just gonna hear that clicking and just consider it experiencing the cross I have to bear with neurotic German short hair pointer. Okay, so we've got the wet ingredients. You've subbed in your banana or your apple or what have you. And next we're gonna dump in the oats. Now there's a trick. Why are we dumping in the oats on top of stuff? Well, 
because it's gonna be the little platforms for when we mix in our other dry ingredients and we don't want like clumps of baking powder. So there you go. So now this recipe says it makes 10 people, 10 or it serves 10. Yeah, it doesn't. Don't even, don't even go there with 10 people in this recipe. It feeds like two teenagers and two normal adults on a good day. Okay, so now I got like this mound of oats. So once again, pre-measured. Um, I'm gonna put in some baking powder. Now, if you don't have baking powder and you're down to just baking soda, Google that up, sister. There is ways to work around that. I personally don't have them memorized. Then it calls for some salt. Now, you might say, what, a sweet recipe? Oh yeah, don't skip on that salt. You wanna taste this, right? Add the damn salt. Okay, I used to always skimp on salt. That's such a bad idea. All right, I didn't, I didn't like preset out my utensils. So here we go. We're gonna just lightly mix that around the top. And here's, here's the deal. This recipe has no seasonings listed in it because it's like the box and then you decide what to put in it. So I have cinnamon. I think that's like pretty much required part of any recipe I make. And I just do like a huge two teaspoons. That was probably like three teaspoons to be honest. You can do a tablespoon, it doesn't really matter. And what else did I have in my cupboard? Well. I have nutmeg, so I'm just gonna, you know, do that little, grind that little nutmeg in there. There we go. Uh, if you have cloves, put them in. You got, uh, here's another sub, pumpkin pie spice. Put it in. It doesn't matter. You don't have to measure it. Just put it in. It's gonna be great. Now, orange. I highly recommend adding orange zest to pretty much anything you bake especially if you're gonna add rhubarb later on. So I'm just gonna zest this little orange. There we go. And if you don't have a whole orange, use those little cuties your kids sometimes eat. I mine tend to go rock hard in the bottom of the fruit basket, but hey, what are you gonna do? Okay, so then you mix it up. And um, it's pretty stiff, right? So what have we missed? What have we got? Cooking oil, eggs, sugar, oatmeal, baking powder, salt, and the final ingredient, milk. So why do I not add the milk with the eggs and sugar? Cause, like there is no rhyme or reason there. It just is what it is, folks, it is what it is. So the dairy, let's just call it dairy. Because if you're out of milk, who cares? Use half and half. Use your whipping cream, add a little water, or don't, it's gonna be great. What else can you use? Sour cream, if you want. What else could you use? Yogurt, probably plain yogurt. There you go, healthy. I don't care, I'm not doing this healthy. Okay, so you put that milk in. Now, this is the thing with baked oatmeal is that you can use absolutely anything you have in your freezer. You got that little tiny bit of frozen berries, excellent, throw them in. All right, you got that ubiquitous bag of frozen rhubarb because that is the fruit of Alaska. The Alaskan fruit should be called rhubarb. And this is from like, I don't know, three years ago. I went to the bottom of my freezer to get this stuff. There we go, frozen rhubarb. That little bit of frozen ice stuff that goes in there, that's fine. That's like, you know, balances out the extra solids that you just added. You do kind of want to keep your dry and wet ingredients ratios even, but so you don't. Turns out a little dry, a little, a little moist. You'll tweak it the next time. So what else could we have added? Okay, Raid in the closet or the pantry, we could have added chocolate chips. My kids don't like sweet things because they're aliens from another planet, so I don't add those. Look at this, I found a little teensy tiny bag of nuts in the freezer. You could add that. I hate nuts, I think they're evil. I don't add them. What else could you add? You bet, whiskey. Add the alcohol of choice. It'll bake off and the flavor will be great. All right, folks, now it's time to bake it. You should be preheating your oven at 350, I think, but whatever. Here's the thing with baked oatmeal. You can bake it in absolutely anything. A pie pan. I do that a lot. Um, and when I double it, I do a nine by 13. You want your stuff to be like yay thick. You know, like, what is that? You, that, that big, that big, okay. So if you divide it into two different containers, great. 
Make sure your two containers are the same thickness. Well, all right, it's gonna rise a little bit, so be aware of that. I might have overfilled this. I broke my deep dish one. May she rest in peace. All right, here we go, folks. We have, let's see if you can see this. So the milk is really like milky, and I don't care that's not mixed in. It's gonna like get absorbed. There we go. This is rhubarb, lowish cranberry, and orange zest baked oatmeal. I'm gonna cook it for like a while. I'm gonna put it, I'm, I am gonna set a timer this time, like 30 minutes, because that's when the children will come and keep telling me that they're hungry. I can hold them off for 30 minutes. And when like the middle starts, stops jiggling, you got dinner. Actually, it's breakfast. It really is better as breakfast, but it's a pandemic. So we are going to eat it for dinner. Now to make this savory, Oh, I don't have any bacon out. Add some bacon. Done. Boom. All right. I might post a recipe. Maybe I'll just take a picture of this little card. It's really hard to read and it's covered in stains. But hey, folks, here's your pandemic cooking 101 lesson for tonight. The children want to eat like every single night. Ah, it slays me. Okay, feed the masses. I don't have a remote, so here I go leaning in to like finish this.